All right, uh, you might find this a little hard to believe. Actually, I also found it very hard to believe, but uh, my daughter and uh, my wife and me were invited to a pride uh, celebration, a pride, uh, I don't know, some festival or something like that. I'll not give you specific details out of respect for the individual, okay? But uh, they invited my daughter, my wife and me and, uh, you know, and they wanted it to be like, you know, come as a guest and they would even take care of the expenses. I suspect it was because of, uh, they were calling social media people and uh, they must have seen I have a channel and uh, maybe that's why or, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to think aloud. Or maybe they were just, you know, wanting it to be a big crowd. Uh, but they, you know, said come as a guest and bring your camera and take photographs and uh, it's complimentary beverages on the house. And then there was a buffet and all that. Very polite. They didn't say anything bad or didn't imply anything. And it would be more or less like a full day kind of a fun play event where there would be jumping castles and games for the children and clowns and entertainment and storytelling and you know all the stuff. Okay. And uh, my wife, uh, you know, they enticed my wife by telling her they'll be, you know, for ladies also they'll be face painting and uh, no, sorry, makeup and jewelry and shopping and you know they have stalls and all that so it was a big and event and uh, later on uh, we, we said no I, I said no predominantly uh, and then uh, when we uh, checked on Facebook it was a really really a big event it was a very big event uh, there was stage there were bands uh, there were all this, uh, you know, jumping castles, things for the children, things for uh, family, family kind of event. So, uh, kind of a pride month, okay, thing. And uh, later on, I, I realized this is a global thing. It's happening in many countries around the world. And I did, obviously, once you search on Google, you know, it starts giving you more of the feed. So, I started to get more videos and photographs from on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and I was just being bombarded with pride events. Okay. Now, why didn't I go? Well, it's not that I'm against, I don't like pride, you know, the lesbian, gay, transgender community. It's, uh, you know, you are who you are, you identify yourself the way you like. And uh, I understand why they call it pride or... Uh, Jordan Peterson says, uh, pride itself is, you know, evil. I understand why they want to boast and brag and show the world, see, I'm lesbian or I'm uh, gay or I'm a homosexual or I'm transgender, because Almost every religion, whether Christianity, uh, Islam or whichever religion, they don't permit this. And in some religions, it is punishable by death, like in Iran, Saudi. Uh, and there have been even horrific stories where they've thrown people from the top of the building or they've shot themselves, shot, shot them, you know, kill them. Uh, in my one of my WhatsApp groups, they, it's all horror videos and all that. They shared some how the Taliban or the Afghani they are punishing people. Very graphic videos. Okay. So given the fact that they are suppressed in society and uh, in religion, and many fathers and mothers to this day consider them as a matter of shame. Uh, they don't accept them. They consider, like in many cases, there have even been parents who 
have uh, broken down and broken off the relationship in uh, one of the episodes of Dr. Phil where, oh, this was really heartbreaking, where there was a father being interviewed and he was like, uh, uh, he was like almost breathing heavy and like disturbed and he said, okay, we are going to call your son. Uh, and uh, he said, and he's like holding himself, like he's literally suffering. And then they bring his son and his son is now dressed up like, like a woman, a female, complete female with makeup, looks like a female and, and he's like, oh, and he's breathing heavy and he's in real pain. And uh, it, it was a very heartbreaking video to watch. And, uh, you know, the father is like, why, you know, why? And he's in so much pain, you know? So it's, it's a moral dilemma because the, you know, the way the father and mother have been raised, it's like if you're a man or you're born as a male, you live as a male. If you're a female, you live as a female. But now if you have, you know, gender dysmorphia and you start mutilating or cutting your body parts and injecting steroids and hormones, in some places they call it what uh, transgender care. You know, they use the word care. It's it's all about play, wordplay. Uh, and then you also have uh, where now the big pharma or the medical industry, they know that if they were to guide a young man or young woman in the proper way, you don't make money. But if you make them go through a surgery, cut their genitals, uh, their genitalia, stitch it up and take uh, testosterone and all those steroids and medicines and hormones, they'll make up to a minimum, minimum. This is the minimum amount, huh? Seventy thousand dollars annually. You are guaranteed, and obviously it is much more than that. And uh, it's, you know, uh, there have been so many people who have, you call it detransitioning. They have regretted cutting their healthy breasts or their body parts. In some cases, there was even this TikTok video where they showed. Uh, and this female who cut off her healthy breasts, she started taking all this injection. She even showed in a jar. This is actually there on TikTok. Her uh, ovaries or something. She showed, ha, ah, see, these are my ovaries. And in a jar, like, like, you know, you go to this, some science museums and you see dead uh, body parts or children or snakes or animals in an oily jar. So she was showing that proudly, ha ha ha. And then you have these TikTok videos and Instagram videos. Females who were once like a girl actually showing like, you know, the, they've cut off their breasts and this particular female injects herself with male testosterone for bodybuilding. And she was showing a six pack abs and saying, I'm a guy and I was born in the wrong body and now I'm in the right body. And and you also have very famous celebrities like, what's her name? Uh, the one who started in X-Men. Uh, uh, Elliot? Not Elliot. Uh, I can't get her name. She starred in X-Men. She's Canadian. Okay. So, I uh, can't get her name here. Uh, she, you know, they even say that she has taken implants for getting six-pack abs. <laughs> very beautiful girl, very beautiful, who starred in X-Men series and now has transitioned to a boy or man. So, when you start targeting children is where things are unacceptable. In Canada now, there are even rules whereby if you uh, prevent your child from getting the so-called care or even US, you are liable to I don't know, they can take you to court or something? In Canada, in US, I'm not too sure. But if you check social media, they are popularizing this, they are normalizing it. But where it becomes absolutely unacceptable, and this is one of the core reasons why I was also against it, I still am, is when you have grown men and grown women, 
grown. And I've seen this with my own eyes. In these parades, walking naked. I'm not exaggerating. You can search and find out for yourself. They are actually naked. Okay, they're showing their private parts and they're dangling it in front of the crowds and showing and locking lips and touching each other. That is not acceptable at all by any standards. Forget uh, adults. You're showing it to children? And then I don't know how these videos, how they are permitting this. In uh, USA, okay, in United States, there are transgender, no, transvestites, sorry, men dressed up as women or who have undergone surgery and look like women wearing, uh, reading to children this literature, these books about a boy can be a girl, a girl can be a boy and and we have even seen uh, deposition, no, sorry, uh, hearings among council members of books that explicitly, explicitly speak on sex between a boy and boy and a girl and girl, explicitly speak on sex. And when the parent was reading it aloud, the teachers said, stop, stop, uh, you don't have to read these books. Knowledge is, uh, should be given to all. Yeah, knowledge, yeah, fine, but not these kind of porno books, books that are speaking on sex. <sighs> to three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, you're reading it out. That's where it becomes ugly. So that is why people are so against it. But see, if you are a normal individual, let's normally, in, let me define what I'm saying. If you are dressed up like a transvestine or you are dressed up, you know, uh, gay or whatever and you are re respecting the people in a crowded area, fine. You see, when I make my videos, I'm normally without a shirt and I walk. Today I came late, so I'm just wearing this shirt. I walk in the, this empty in inside forest area. This is the main road. There's no traffic here. There's no, it's not a public place. This is the inside of the forest. That's why you never see anyone. But if I were to go in a public place, I'll always wear uh, like this. I'll always wear something. Now, why? Because there are maybe children, there are families, and it's not appropriate to wearing. There's so many tourists here who come down from uh, Russia, come down from the West, they'll wear just the shorts, nothing at the top. Yeah, if you're going to the beach, I can understand. Yes, you want a little bit of a sun, I can understand. But when you start going to a restaurant or a public place like a shopping a supermarket or fruit vegetable market, you need to respect the local community. There are family people there. <sighs> okay, if a guy is going without a shirt, but then you have ladies walking around in a bikini. They'll put a see-through dress with a pink, very bright pink uh, two-piece bikini. And some of them dangle their cleavage in front of everyone. <sighs> yeah, you can be a modern thinker, but I mean, children are looking, right? And then I find it very inappropriate when these very same people make their children dress up like this. And here's a funny thing. I was not even speaking about the pride. The, sorry, the LGBTQ community. I'm speaking of normal people. And it is not acceptable. So then when you get these members of the LGBTQ who go n naked, nude, who show public display of affection, locking their lips and touching each other in public. They call it free love or something like that. In Canada, they have been having this. How can you accept it? Now, I know why they were calling me, my wife and my kid. They wanted it to, you know, the PR company or whatever. They wanted it to be accepted as a family event. As, see, we are family inclusive. 
We, we accept others. Hi, doggy. Why are you walking? So we accept family people. We are family friendly. But the problem here is, you know, you want to bring families. You want to bring people. But then, uh, you know, you get one or, one or two or three of these social elements. You just need one to do something like this. Would you want your child to see all this? And see, in as far as normalizing this kind of behavior, I'm perfectly okay with you being, this is me. You can be gay, you can be lesbian, uh, you can be uh, homosexual, you can be a transvestite, you can cross-dress. I don't mind all that. But then when you start teaching these principles to children and you start sharing this information and you start uh, wanting to entice them, that's, that's where it becomes unacceptable. That is the main concern, the main fear, the main bone of contention almost all non-LGBTQ plus families have. And then when you get this unwanted drama, oh, my preferred pronouns are him, her, they, them, zim, zir, zim, zim. You know, even that interview which was viral, this female, she's promoting a movie. And when this lady welcomes her, hi, welcome, she's a female, uh, of Indian origin and she says hi my name is some name she gives she says and my preferred pronouns is they them and almost immediately the news presenter says uh, sorry what she's saying yeah my preferred pronouns is they them hey doggy what do you want hmm? Come. he doesn't know whether to be friendly or non-friendly so the presenter, after gathering, you know, just because you prefer English without its grammar and you want your pronouns, I'm not going to uh, change my grammar just for you, just to accom accommodate you. I will call you by name and uh, I will speak to you like a normal person. Uh, I'm not going to start calling you they's and them and, you know. And um, then she said, oh, if you're uncomfortable, no, you're me. What she said is, you are making the... What happened? Hmm? You know what they're about here? Come here, come here. Come You know why this dog is uh, barking? Because they are uh, master, these two females, they know this doggy, they are coming here. So they're just trying to protect her, which is perfectly fine. So what was I telling you? Yeah. Uh, so the news presenter said, look, I'm not going to change, uh, ruin my grammar for you. And with regards to making it uncomfortable, you're the one who out of the blue brought up my preferred pronouns are they and them. I was talking to you normally. Uh, when you start, uh, you know, compelling other people to live your lifestyle, you make things uncomfortable. In fact, uh, I've told you this before, there are so many recruiters I personally know, based in Europe, based in Canada, based in USA. The minute they see the resume that states, my preferred pronouns are they and them, or they see in their LinkedIn bio, in the bracket, they and them, or shim and shur and him and her, and they quietly reject it without saying a word. Why? Because they don't want drama. They don't want a scandal. They don't want a social media shitstorm with the, you know, having to defend themselves against claims. <coughs> so. I know, I've got this question many times. What if your daughter becomes a lesbian? Uh, see, when she is of age and she, she is lesbian, fine, she is lesbian. Uh, when you earn your own money, do your own thing and go be as lesbian as you want. You identify yourself as whatever. But after you, 
earn your own. See, over here, I'll tell you one more thing. It is all about upbringing. If the mother and father are not there to guide the child, communicate with the child, and if the child spends the majority of the time on social media, on these channels, on these, uh, you know, listening to these influencers and, oh, you're feeling lost, oh, you're feeling incomplete, oh, you're feeling confused, oh, we will love you, we will be there for you, we are the support community. So then they get carried away. Oh, they be, they are talking to me with so much love and affection. They're being so patient. Yeah, the mother and father is paying the bills. Mother and father is working hard for you. Mother and father is taking care of everything. Sweet words they are giving you. So what does a child know that, oh, the person who pays your bills really loves you. It's not the sweet words. But uh, being immature young creatures, they will say, oh, he's giving me so sweet words. He's telling me, I love you, you know. Then they go there and that is a hotbed of pedophiles, of manipulative people, of dangerous individuals. So it all comes down to upbringing. So if a child spends the majority of the time communicating with the mother and father with proper love, understanding and a supportive environment, they wouldn't resort to all this. And yes, young boys and young girls, especially young girls, they go through a lot of confusion, a lot of questions, and a lot of, you know, situations where they are afraid to ask. In fact, uh, when young girls go through puberty, they themselves go through so many, a whirlwind of emotions, they don't know what to do. Why do you think some girls, they succumb to the pressures of giving in to a guy's demands? Because, they are told, oh, you don't have a boyfriend, you don't have someone who loves you. Oh, look, he loves you, he loves you, he cries for you, he gives you these sweet sounding words. Why do you think there are so many girls who end up with having an affair with a very older man or elder man? Because they are searching for a father figure. And here is a man who is giving them all these sweet sounding words. So, that missing, that vacuum that is there, that father figure like role model, the male, Zing is occupied by someone else. See, it all comes down to upbringing. It all comes down to communication. That is why my wife, every single day, she'll spend hours and hours talking to my little daughter. Hours and hours. She'll talk to her, listen to her, talk what happened. And uh, my daughter keeps talking because she wants her best friend. She wants her to be her best friend. And then, you know, I've also learned and I've also changed my mannerisms and behavior where uh, whenever my daughter comes to me and shows me anything simple from putting on a helmet, she says, see, Papa, see, I say, oh, wow, wow, that is amazing. And when she puts on her shoes, she shows me, see, Papa, I did the shoes by myself, even though now she has done it for the past one year, one year plus, she still shows me when she is putting her shoes, she's taking out her shoes, she's putting on the helmet. Sometimes when she is having, uh, that day when she was having bath, she she poured water on her and see Papa, see, I'm putting water. She won't. I was confused. I was like, what is this? I asked my wife, what what is she trying to tell me? No, she is trying to tell you she's having bath by herself. So I said, oh, wow, wow, very good, very good. So she's looking for that validation from somebody. And if me and my wifey, we don't give her that, you think she is not going to seek it elsewhere? No. So, and I'll tell you, when I pick up my daughter from a school and other friends, there are so many small boys and small girls who come near my bike and they're looking for that little bit of pat on their back or saying, oh, very good. And they see me encouraging them. They feel very happy. Only thing is, I don't want to make it a habit. Otherwise, you know, I'll end up with all these other people's kids looking up to me as a father figure. I don't want to be that saint of, you know, all the children and all that. And then get into complications with other people's, you know, parents, other children's parents. So anyway, this pride uh, thing, I don't want it to suddenly seem normal for my child. I know they're trying to normalize it. I know they are trying to make it fun. I know that they are trying to put the theme that being uh, 
LGBTQ is fun. It's exciting. It's happening. It's cool. It's enjoyable. You'll meet many friends. You'll meet many people. I know what they are trying to do, but um, I'm not going. I'm going to make sure that my daughter knows and has those moments of fun, enjoyment, and entertainment elsewhere. I don't want her to associate LGBTQ plus as fun, cool, and even though they want to make it fine, it's. I'm not saying I'm against it. You can continue with that theme that you feel, wow, we are special. Like they even have children coming on stage and giving them prizes and awards to make them feel like, wow, the association, no? LGBTQ Pride Month is fun, is special. Is I know what they are trying to do, but uh, you know, I'm aware. So I'll just take care of my daughter. I'll give her those fun, those special moments through other means. Like there are other festivals where children can dance on stage and uh, religious festivals and all that. And I encourage my wife to take her there and, you know, make her feel great there. Hmm. It's funny in today's day and age, what all you have to think about, what all you have to consider, how you have to be alert and aware what is going on globally. Otherwise, I'll tell you these movements, they will target you, your family and your young ones. And it's dangerous. And especially in the USA, now they are normalizing it by bringing this kind of literature in schools, uh, teaching ch kids uh, to have these pride flags, wave them, have a good time, play games. You have girls who have to compete with men or boys. You have boys who identify themselves as girls and compete with. It, it's, it has become a political shitstorm, man. It's like uh, even biologists, even men of science, they are afraid to speak up, otherwise they will be shut down by the global social media. Hmm. Uh, you'll be branded as what a transphobic. Uh, or homophobic or whatever phobic. You can see some of these uh, interactions on YouTube, especially that one lady with glasses, one senator asks her, uh, do men get pregnant or something like that? And she's saying, uh, I would refuse to answer this question because it's transphobic and you're hurting and harming uh, your, no, what your speech is causing violence against uh, you know, trans men and trans women. And the senator didn't fall into a trap and say, by asking a question, I'm, I'm inciting violence. Yes, you are by, you know, she tried to sound intelligent. So crazy, man. People with education, people in such modern, futuristic countries, they have to listen to all this. Anyway, anyway, I just thought I'd share this with you and uh, you let me know your thoughts. What do you think? And why do you think now they are targeting family people? In fact, uh, local brands, seriously, huh? ice cream brands, KFC, Burger King, all this McDonald's, uh, they have Pride Month with special colorful ice creams, colorful sweets, seriously and uh, colorful promotions and get a clown dressed up in colors and they are actually trying to increase their sales by participating in the pride month if you go to the shopping mall it's full of these pride flags and colors so they're trying to normalize it all the best trying to um, you know trying to hide the reality from your children the best way is to educate them, communicate with them, and be close to them. Otherwise, you're in deep shit. Anyway, this is what I wanted to share with you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You guys take care. It's me signing off. Ciao.